Hello and welcome back. And you can tell from my excitement, you can tell from my anticipation. I told you that you know Sunday is Mother's Day, and how best can we celebrate Mother's Day but talk to one of our ultimate mothers? I mean, by virtue of position, whether she likes you or not, she becomes a national mother. And so today, as you sit and watch personality profile, I'm sat on the same sofa with Nana Kunedu Ajiman Rollins. How do I call you? Nana, do I call you first lady? How, how do I call you? I think I'll leave it to you. Nana is fine. Nana, Nana supersedes everything. Since I'm a traditionalist, you know, Nana supersedes everything. So I'll well, call you really Nana. it's really a title. It's a title. Okay. So I'll call you Nana. Okay, that's good. Cool. But Nana, you know, I want to find out because you are really one who was in there when you were in school from tech. Oh, I don't know where you went before tech. At but you went to school. Ah, you, must, you must have had a nickname then. I am not telling you this nickname. <laughs> <laughs> there were several. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Tell me, the, give me the nicest one. No, the one that, you know, the nicest mm -hmm. one. You know, like when you're smart in politics, girl if you, <laughs> no, if you give any nickname, it, it follows you. So it I'm not going to give you. Yeah. Okay, guys, so <laughs> we'll, we'll keep that. We'll keep that. But anyway, I'm here to talk to you because it's Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by virtue of your position, you know, for a long time, you were the nation's mother. And the difficulty I have in this interview is that everybody knows you sometimes even more than I do and I'm trying to fish out a site that is interesting for all of us to share on Mother's Day so I want to start with a dish that you hate making you know you just wonder why do I have to go through all this for this you know meal or pot of soup or something which, which one well there are a couple of them but mm -hmm. I think the one I really hate cooking is Pamela soup I've been quite I can understand not only is it a lot of work, but it's so messy. <laughs> and for me, that's why when someone can restart them making the palms fruit mm -hmm. thing, and I think also Mrs. O'Clue's industry, mm -hmm. I thought, Kulenu's industry, yes. I thought this is brilliant because you can just make your, your meat and then pour well, the yeah, stuff yeah. into it without all this mess. Bo boil the palm kernel. Exactly. Pound it. Pound it, it. Sieve it. And you have to sieve it about three or four times. So that all the little things go away. Because my mother will sit there and make sure that you're doing the right <laughs> thing, you know. So it's a lot of work. And you eat it within the same period, so. Well, why bother? I think I agree with you on that. Now, you just mentioned your mother and his mother's mm -hmm. day. And I know mom is still alive. Yes, she is. And I know you have a good relationship. I do. Now, I want to go back to, you know, like childhood, early childhood and mother. I mean, was she the hard type or was she the liberal type, you know? Oh, no, no, no. My mother was never liberal. <coughs> Very hard. My father was a liberal one. Okay. Yes, he was liberal. My mom was a teacher by profession, um, believed in the strictest of, you know, upbringing and discipline. Um... If you had something to say, you wait for her to finish what she's saying and then you can give her your point of view. But at the same time, I think she was a modern mother because compared with the rest of our friends, mm -hmm. she accommodated things that we would say. Sometimes she would throw it out. But other times, okay, you have a point of view, but I am saying, mm -hmm. and then, she, you know, like your point of view, she's headed, mm -hmm. but she is telling you what to do. So she was very strict at the same time. Um, she kind of held the, the house together because a lot of nephews and nieces and um, my father's family members were there staying in the same house. Do, do, do you find <laughs> you become your mother in bringing up your children or you've toned, toned it down? down? I thought I toned down, but my children think I'm one of the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> and and because how? I, uh -huh. There were certain things that um, I, I, I didn't think it was good to train my children differently from the way I was brought up. Of I thought I, would, I should give them the same discipline, the same etiquette, the same upbringing. But then I thought that, okay, times have changed. Mm -hmm. If my mother was making us sleep at 6 o'clock, I'll let them sleep at 7. <laughs> but in between... A small leeway. Yes, a little leeway. But you must do something that is of worth. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I was a little more flexible, but not much. Not much. No. So, not so, much. so in your household, would uh, President Rollins be your father, where he's the liberal type, or he was also the straight one? Um, I'll say he was liberal. In, but he wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally was like a single mother. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, from the time that Zanetto was a year old, we had all these political things mm -hmm. and so on. So he ha it has not been a normal family life. So I've been there for them as mother and father. You played both roles. I did. I did. So I, ha I had to be Armstrong. Well, I think you've done well. <laughs> you should, you should, I mean, I, I, I need not say that. Now, one thing but that most, most uh, women in Ghana do that. I'm glad you said most, most women. Most women do, because the fathers are there, but uh, mm. uh, they kind of take a, a back stage until they want to beat kids and so on. Or they are, they are you know, about their work or whatever. But they, they, they are not upfront. Mm -hmm. All of them. Let me put it in quotes. Well, I mean, in, in the upbringing of the children. In, in our household, my, my father said he didn't spend enough time with us. Mm -hmm. So my mom should do all the telling of because that five minutes that he's come home, he's not going to tell any of his kids off so that they turn against him. No, they want. <laughs> you guys want to be loved, and it's not fair. <laughs> so kids always think that mothers are hard. Fathers are nice and soft. It's not so. Because maybe you have one up against us. You know, you've done the breastfeeding, you've done the cuddling, mm. you've done everything. You know, so the bond is there. And that's that five minutes I come home before I go to work. There's not going to be any discipline. Look, mess the place as much as you can. <laughs> as much as you can. But on the subject of movement, I want to, first of all, I want to congratulate you. Okay. Because you popularized girl power. Mm. Positive girl power, if I may say and really encourage women. Where did you get that from? I think from my, my grandmother. My grandmother? My grandmother, and then my mother. Because I, I was named, a, well, not my grandmother really, my grand aunt. Okay. My mother's, my father's aunt. Okay. My grand aunt. Yeah, grand aunt. My grandfather's sister. Mm -hmm. Because she would permanently say, um, in trees, uh, uh, you're a strong person, you shouldn't allow people to put you down. Women are supposed to be strong and lead. They should bring in the Yasantua issue. She wow. will talk about the historical movement of the Ashantis from the north down and give you women who are leading. And she will tell you a lot of history. So, uh, but at the same time, she would um, chastise us if we did the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. She was a very strong woman. And when my grandfather died, she literally took charge of the, the family and... Um, I'm, I'm surprised though because I would have thought more a woman in the you know much closer you know would and have my, no, my, my mother too my mother is a very strong woman mm -hmm. I, because you asked me which woman oh no it's fine which woman oh no no no, no. it's fine <laughs> so it's fine. I was going to come on to my okay. mother also because the, the, the two of them really influenced me in a very very positive way and um, I think I think my, my mom in her own way because she was educated she had a style my grand aunt, uneducated, very wise, um, um, an encyclopedia of history mm -hmm. and um, how you bring up kids properly. And she, she knew stuff. So she would then put us through those things. So, so the, the, the challenge I find for you was mm -hmm. that, you know, before you came, first ladies have been very conservative. But there you were saying, no. You know, women within Ghana should, you know, stand up and be on their own and you're setting up your nurseries and 31st December women. Where, how did it start and, you know, how did you say, no, I'm going to do it despite criticism? Because men wouldn't want to empower women, you know. <laughs> you're going to take the remote control from us. <laughs> I know. Well, it, it kind of started at home. Um... We were like six girls and one boy. Okay. So my father was permanently and persistently saying, the sky is your limit. You're going to get there. Everybody must do their best. Before we go to school every um, uh, semester, no semester, beginning of the year, he would put us around the dining table. That's secondary school. And he would look at everybody. My cousins were also saying this. So we were many. There were about 12 or 13 girls and just a few boys. 
And then he asked everybody, do you want to continue school? You are like, yeah. Do you want to continue school? Then after he's gone round, he'll say that anybody who thinks they want to go and get married, tell me now, I don't want to spend my money on you. Why are you going to look for a boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then he'll go into the importance of education. Mm-hmm. Importance of education. He will go further to say, listen, if you don't get an education, you are of no use to yourself, not alone to others, you know. And we'll talk about, look at people who, with all due deference, may be um, insane or something. You see them walking around, around they, they are, you see them, they are pregnant. Do you think that it is an insane man who makes her pregnant? So you don't need to rush. That's what he was telling us all the time. <laughs> you don't need to rush. Time will wait for you. That's a good just analogy, make, though. Yes. Just make sure that... Don't think that if you, you don't rush, you won't find a man. Whatever you will. It is. Whatever it is. You know, so... <clears throat> he started that encouragement. Then, of course, when I was in the UST, when I was in tech, um, I, I think that in Achimota School first. In Achimota School, there was a lot of encouragement of women. Mm-hmm. It was a co-ed, as you know. And women were encouraged to do a lot of things. And so it helped me to really push myself uh, forward in a lot of things, in um, acting on stage, doing stuff, you know, singing, blah, blah, the choir, then the band, (laughs) 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 and then the opera, you Uh know. And uh, from there I went to tech, Mm -hmm. And in tech, joined all these associations that would actually help empower women also. Not in the sense of empowering, but you did stuff that actually built you up, built your confidence further. And I think through all these things, it helped me to be who I am. Because when the revolution started, it was then that I I took a decision to, to work with women. Now, what, what, from Achimota to Tech, did you know that, look, I just want to be a politician, or at the time, you know, look, I'll be a consultant, a doctor, or a pilot? I mean, what, was, that your politi- was that your career, or no. what, what was your dream career, um, going through Achimota to a Tech? I, I think in Achimota School, I really um, have to think, you know, because a lot of things have happened. At the time, it was fashionable to be accountant and... Uh... No, I wanted to be a doctor. Ah, okay. Yeah. okay. I wanted to be a doctor. So I, I, was in, I did science, actually. Okay. Yeah. My, I did, um, um, what do they call it? There was general science and... This is chemistry, biology. Yes. And admat. Yes. You know, so that, w- that was my strength. Mm-hmm. But in the sixth form, I, I, I changed. I went and did economics and um, um, what did I do history and I um, can't even remember my subjects anymore. Yes. I did a, f- a fourth subject. I did art as a fourth subject. Okay. Actually. Um, we were supposed to do three subjects and I decided to do art because I was good at art and I thought, let me add you it. You just threw that in for good yeah, measure. Yeah, so I threw it in. <laughs> and um, then I got entry into University of Ghana, actually, originally. Yeah. But I had applied to both places because my lecturer was telling me, you'll be a good architect. Okay. So I applied, my teacher, mm-hmm. applied to do architecture. I was like, mm, I want to go and do something else here. I wanted to do economics. So and my ha- uncle was the head of economics in Legon. So um, he also was encouraging me to come and do economics. But I did apply to tech to do architecture. And then, um, somehow, I, I, things didn't go the way I wanted. Everybody's never <laughs> <laughs> Because um, it wasn't so much as not passing an exam, but you pass the exam and everything, but, you know, they open Legon. I thought they used to open the university for the, for, I think, those who were there already before the new students come in. Mm-hmm. Then, I don't know what it was, there was some fight with some vice chancellor or something and then the students went on a rampage and then they closed the university so we and we hadn't entered you know <coughs> so you decided yeah. i'm going to take no i was going to go away with my dad i got a school in england ah yeah so 
my, my dad had made all the arrangements already. Two of my siblings were already there. And my uncle, who wanted me to come to um, Legon, I was, he, was, he came directly after my, my father. So my father was like, you go and say goodbye to them. We're leaving in two days. So I went to my uncles and aunties to say goodbye. He looked at me and said, who are you? I said, oh, I'm going here and here and here. Who are you? No, 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 no. Because there's no cell phones where he could have <laughs> taken the phone. <laughs> so he had to take his car and go to my dad's office to go and find out, why are you taking it away? Two have gone, have not come back. They're sending a third one. What for? She's got entry into Legon. She's got entry into tech. Oh, my father said, oh, you didn't know I had entry into tech. I had received the, you know, <laughs> the just <same>. left <laughs> and decided <laughs> I wasn't going to talk about it. So between the three of them, my mother, my father, and, um, and my uncle, mm -hmm. they aborted my trip. Wow. And I had already written to the university that I wasn't coming on my own. So I had to, you know, eat the humble pie. Go back to them. Yeah. And my uncle physically took me to take. Physically. I was very upset. He took it upon himself. So That's my niece. She's coming. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to take a break here. And now, when we come back, I want to find out if Nana regrets not taking the trip to UK or not. Stay tuned. Well, hello and welcome back up close and personal with Dr. Nana Kunedu Ajiman Rawlings, Mrs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wife of former uh, President Jerry John Rawlings. And what a perfect gift for uh, a pre uh, Mother's Day uh, viewing. Now, Nana, just before one on the break, I just wanted to find out that the, the decision the family took not to take you to London but to go to take. Sitting back today, would you have said, look, if I'd gone, it would have been better, or was it a good choice? Um, I've not thought. Of, no, I, I, no, no, no. I, think, I don't think I've missed anything by not going. Mm. I, I think that I wouldn't give up my university life for anything in, 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 <laughs> in Kumasi. No, it was fun. And my life would have been completely different. I don't know how different, mm -hmm. but um, I, I do not regret it. I am happy I was uh, forced to be here to, um, yeah, indeed, I, I have helped to change history in this country also, so. I won't argue with that. No, you can't. I, I can't <laughs> argue with that. One Especially thousand, with the women. <laughs> 1,800 daycares across <laughs> the country, mm. I can't argue with that. Thank and you. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. But it's Mother's Day, and you got four lovely children. Now, you see, even though you love all kids equally they all have different traits that you know you love about them so uh, the four kids i mean what what do you love you know about them about each of them yeah this one is quiet this one is very oh, good. none of them is quiet <laughs> <laughs> they may appear so you know but, um they have a lot of fortitude mm -hmm. um conviction you know strength passion in their various ways mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't think I can pick on one child and say, oh, I prefer this one to that, in, in any, no, in no, any it's way. Yeah. It's very difficult to, to, comp mm -hmm. to compartmentalize your children and say, mm -hmm. oh, this one is better than that. It takes maybe a, a psychologist to do mm -hmm. that. I don't know if you're a psychologist and your children, you can actually compartmentalize them. But for me, um, I'm just grateful for the children I have. But these same children have, could have been somewhere else or even could have been with, for me. And if I had brought them up differently, they would be different. Mm -hmm. I am still coming back to the upbringing of children and the way you, 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 you mentor them, the way you direct them, that you parent them along their paths. Um, the other time, not so long ago, I think last Sunday, I was speaking somewhere and I said, um, it, it is not the money that should make somebody grow up well. It is the parenting and the upbringing. So, after, and I, I think I went into that quite a bit. And after the program, one of the television 
stations, I can't remember which one now, came and said, oh, you know, you're talking to women, when women really like money, and you said money is not important. So I said to him, I didn't say that. You are not listening. Money is as important as you use it or you make it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there are certain values in life that you cannot exchange for money. I don't have money, therefore I shouldn't teach the children how to be clean, mm -hmm. how to do the right thing. No. How to stand up when adults come into a room. No. So there are certain things that do not depend on you having money, but it depends on how you've been brought up, how the traditions have been. And I think I've been able to um, imbibe this into the children, and I'm happy about it. I've always told them that um, education is very important. That no matter what, if even I cannot pay, you have to work and get that education. So we, we have really just been behind them for them to push themselves to their limit. So I, I can only say I thank God for who they've become because you can do your best for your children and somebody will come and influence them along the way mm -hmm. and they turn out not quite okay, you know, mm -hmm. even though you may be doing your <coughs> best. Mm -hmm. So I, I thank uh, my lucky stars, I thank my God that um, in as much as I put in every effort, they've turned out okay. I mean, uh, obviously you are the first lady so you would have people in the house who have to look after you. Were you able to see if your children and say, look, even though all these guys are there to clean your room, you need to clean your room and you have to do the cooking or <laughs> they couldn't go there, look, the guys have to cook, so you sit down and watch telly. I mean, no, 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 no. You know, first of all, um, my husband came on the scene when the country was in a deep economic mess. Hmm. So there were no servants for me at all. At all. I employed a lady who used to look after, a young lady, who used to look after the youngest one for me every time I have to travel and so on. But we didn't have anything until towards the end of um, 1989, 88, 89. Then I started getting help and support in the home because um, I, I, I couldn't handle uh, my son as much as I could handle the girls. You tell him to do his homework. He said, yeah, yeah, mom, I'm going to do it. And I'm like, don't mom me. Just go and do it. He said, I'm just going to the table to pick my book, mommy. I said, okay. So I head for my room. And I'm hearing some noise outside. And you look out and he's running with the dogs outside. And that's what he's going to do his homework. <laughs> so I, I, I had that problem of being able to take him in, in hand and um, direct him the way I'd been able to mm -hmm. direct the girls. Because the father wasn't there, was busy with the state mm -hmm. issues. So um, from that point onwards, I knew that I didn't need just a house girl. I needed a guy also now, so that he sees that I'm not alone. You know? <laughs> 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 so, but the point I'm making is that they didn't have the luxury mm -hmm. that other uh, presidential families have. Mm -hmm. We were struggling to make ends meet, literally. My parents were helping to look after our household because my husband was working as the head of state and would not take one CD from the state. So we were left to actually, and he told me to quit my job because nobody is going to believe that you're doing this on your own. They'll think I have given it to you to do it. So I, I, I had a, a, a company that was um, printing T-shirts and curtains and all that. You know, it was in a period of... Um, scarcity, mm -hmm. difficulty. So if you are able to get two bills, or if not bills, two pieces of um, grey bath or white calico, mm -hmm. you think, oh, what can I, because you've lined up for, in the sun for so long to get these two. What do I do with it? You either turn it around and make something out of it and make money or, you know, you have to be ingenuous, mm -hmm. ingenious about what you want to do. There has to be a lot of ingenuity. So I started doing a lot of table runners and chair bags, right. printing and stuff like that and making a little more money for the, for the for household. household. That's why people think that I'm a textile designer. I'm not actually. I didn't do textile designing. Ah. No, I didn't. I <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. But I am, you know... Um, Entrepreneurial. Yeah, right. 
quite so. Very Ghanaian then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing is... And so the thing point, well, let me just okay. finish this point. Sure. They, they, of course, have to make their beds when they wake up. They have to clean their rooms. Okay. They don't wash their clothes because I, do, I did have a, well, um, uh, no, wash, a washing machine, no, washing. even mm. then. Because I had a washing machine before he became uh, the chairman <laughs> of the PNDC. <laughs> Uh -huh. And um, sometimes my friends come in, they are ironing their things and say, Ah, which you were doing? And Kolanki thinks it's normal, almost two a day. And I'm like, Don't interfere in my household issues. Let my children learn all these things and let them grow up well. Oh, that's good. They can all do everything for themselves. That's Even good. as we finally did get help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, <coughs> since it's Mother's Day, now, especially men, one of the things we put protect most as our mothers. Men really, really cherish their mothers, even though we don't hold our wives and other women in the same place. I don't know why, but as soon as the roles Shame. change, you know, <laughs> as soon as the roles change, we change. Mm. Now, because of perception and because of our crude politics, there will be bad publicity in the papers and your children may pick up and read. Mm. How, how are they able to say, oh, just ignore this paper? Or did they mm. come to you say, oh, mom, see what they've written again? Mm. You know, how? There were things that they knew about me that they knew were not true. Mm. But there were things that obviously will play on their minds, especially when they were younger. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you really do this, mommy? I look at them, can I do this? No, but they, they've written it. I said, it's not everything they write that is true. You know, I can't do this. Then maybe I'll give reasons why. So there were times when they themselves had those problems. Mm -hmm. But most of the time they knew that no, mom can't do this. No, this is not true. Because at the time, sometimes they say, I'm somewhere else. I'm with them. So they know. <laughs> but wasn't that when we were in this place? So they know. I mean, wow. so they didn't believe everything. That they read. No, well, that's, no. that's good then. Yeah, that, that's good. Everything. That's good. Now, because they lived it. They lived sure. the difficulties. Yeah. Now, what I want to find out is, you know, the moment that you tap, you know, President Rawlings and said, you know, sweetheart, he says, hello, Nana. He said, look, I want to run for presidency. What, what was his first reaction? I don't think that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how did it happen? You know, um, President Mills um, came to him and said, I need to just be able to get this and I'm going to do it for one term because I am not well. And gave him a lot of other re things that talked about other things that I cannot say here. So, from the beginning, we, kn we knew that he was going for one term. And um, a couple of things, uh, you were in the country, so you know, a couple of things happened that then opened the way for contestants. That for some reason, and so that was, from that point of view, he was supporting me then. You know, that... Yeah, and, and I think you can, you can do this. But then things turn differently, and I, I don't think that you want us to talk politics so another time. No, we don't want to talk politics. <laughs> Not today. It, it, it's mother's it, it, day. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now, now I must say, I mean, we've talked about your children, and four of them. Now, you know, even though you are a you know, former first lady, let me ask you, in a very casual way, I would have asked my, my classmate, you know, I mean, is it that you were too posh to push, so you had caesarean, or you oh. went through hey. no, no, no more? Go and ask the military hospital people. <laughs> <laughs> With the first one, the one um, lieutenant colonel came in, you know, because there was, it was a time of scarcity. Mm -hmm. So usually there's nothing. They ask you to bring everything from needle, syringe, mm -hmm. everything, cotton wool. You have to bring everything. So I had my little bag. Which was mm -hmm. there, and I could see this. Some nurses, I was trying to steal my stuff, <laughs> and and I was in labor at the same time, so I'm screaming, you know. And I said, the doctor came and said, "Oh, why not you tell Musano? Oh, Nana, maybe we are not sure. I said, Do you know how I'm suffering? It's really hurting. No, 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 I didn't tell Oh, then I start screaming again. 
<laughs> so no, I didn't have any cesarean. Well, then you did. The last one I did. Okay. Because I almost lost him. Oh, okay. But well, the first it, three yeah. was... The first well, three, no, no. Well, because it's it. leading to my <laughs> question that, you know, you have a really flat stomach for your age and for the number of children you have. You want to release it so you can see how big it is. No. I'm always holding my stomach in. <laughs> And, you know, must compliment you for keeping healthy. Mm. And how have you done it? Well, first of all, um, I'm not a big person. Mm -hmm. The family, we are not big people. Mm -hmm. If you see my mother now, she's really very, very slim. And, but then she's getting old. She's mm -hmm. old. Not that she's getting She's old. But my, my dad, too, was not a big person. Okay. And then um, they used to make sure we ate right. Um, you don't eat because you My father was a manjin director of GNTC. And so we had... Provisions, as they called them. The oppo yeah, <laughs> opportunity to have everything in the mm -hmm. house. While everybody was lining up, we had things in the house. Not in excess, but if we wanted to have... Um, put a tin of milk in my tea, I guess I could have. Mm -hmm. But you never do that. You put just a little bit, because that's the way you've, they've taught you. Mm -hmm. So we did things right. And, and then I was very sporty. I did a lot of sports. Ah. Um, I did ballet. I did gymnastics in Ghana okay. International School, which was my primary school days. Mm -hmm. And so the body was already, I think, kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to Achimoto School, I continued with the sporting activities. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of sports. I was in track and field. I was in um, swimming. I was in, you know, I, I did almost anything. And everything horse riding everything wow. so yeah and to do those things you must be fit mm. and because I myself was asthmatic part of the reason why I did a lot of activity was to make sure that I could breathe well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because if you leave yourself then it, it takes over you and you sort of hunch your body and you can't breathe well so my, my mother used to tell me walk upright and breathe well. You, you have to walk properly, you know. So a lot of sports, I think, kept me going until I finished the secondary school. Cool. Then I went to tech. And I realized that sports continued. So I was doing track and field there for the university. I was doing tennis for the university. I was doing um, netball for wow. the university and swimming for the university. So when we have the inter-university games, I took part in those things also. And... Apart from that, I did a lot of yoga. So, I was thinking that asthma would have been a handicap. It can be if you let it. Ah. Asthma can take over your whole body and you, you cannot operate. It can be. But if you fight it, I mean, you're fighting it. I mean, you want to knock me down, I want to knock you down. <laughs> you know? So I, I try to fight it mm -hmm. by being very sporty. My, my, my dad was very sporty. Okay. Yes, when he was at motor school, he, he played cricket, he played hockey, he played, he was a sprinter. So most of us are also into that. If we are not sprinting, we're doing something else. Did any of the kids take my, up my, your sports? The children. Yeah, yeah your children um, take up your sporting genes. They, they do stuff that I did not do. Mm. Because at the time they were growing up, you know, the economy had collapsed. So everything had collapsed, including the education system. So... When we, the education system was picking up, it picked up with getting children to learn to read and write and just get ma their mathematics right and do stuff without bringing in the other things that we got the opportunity to do. Mm. Sports, debate, you know, spelling bee, stuff that were extracurricular. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the luxury of that. But they still did some sports because what I did was I didn't want a child to be, um, to be at home after school when I was at work. So what I did was I would arrange for them to go for Taekwondo. I arranged the second day they are going for um, swimming lessons. Mm -hmm. Third day they are going for horse riding. Fourth day they are going for, you know, exercising and just training to do anything, you know, but for them to stay in the house. Which is very good. Which is very, very good. So that good. kept them going. You don't want to keep them idle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't um, the kind of disciplines that I had, mm -hmm. but they had a different type of and I mean, uh, as a woman, uh, and, and health-wise, I mean, how critical it is because you find that 
at 60, say, well, I've done everything, so, you know, I can let go. You know, but I see you're not letting go. I mean, advice to other mothers out there, uh, should they Mother get Mother should shit? never let go. Because your whole health depends on it. Mm -hmm. Your heart, your lungs, you know, your back, how you hold yourself, your comportment, all depends on how you treat your body. And um, I think that diseases run away from you when you do some of the mm -hmm. things that, you know, keep you going. Um, even if you're going to get ill, it will knock you down that you cannot even get up at all. Even once in a while you get a bout of malaria or something. Um, so the advice I'll give to mothers is that you don't allow yourself to just let go. I've had four children. I'm not sure I spaced them all out evenly because after I had Zane, within eight months, I was pregnant with Asantua. Mm -hmm. And then I had a, Zane was just a year and something, and I had um, Asantua. A year and maybe five months, maybe. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then with Amina and Yasantua, there's four years between them. Because I told myself I won't have any more children. <laughs> it was too hard. <laughs> Life was too hard. And, um, uh, and every time I had to go and leave them with my mom, and I was doing this 31st work, and I thought, no, this cannot be interrupted with my work interfere with it. So I'd go and leave them with my mother and head off into the villages and so on. So one day my mother was like, you know something? I am a young person too. I have my meetings. You come and leave your children here. You don't have a house staff. And you're setting me to live. I'm not an old lady to be taking care of your children. What woman? Show I'm going to take a break here. When I come back, the conversation continues. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to this exciting conversation. Uh, Nana, uh, in the thick of things, you know, when there's all these political turmoils, you are out there and within your heart, I mean, you've set up 1,800 daycare. So, with the, uh, putting myself in your place, I am doing something good for generation. And then you have people who are obviously from the other side who will not agree and will be writing bad things. And is there at one point you thought, no, what? I'm okay. I'm educated. My kids are educated. Forget it. If, if, you know, if you don't appreciate what I'm doing, I want to quit and go. Did you ever think that? Or you said, oh, to hell with you, I'm still going to do it, whether you say like it or not. Mm, I think there are moments in everybody's life that you kind of look within your eyes, memory. Mm -hmm and ask yourself whether it's worth continuing. That moment. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that moment, then you don't have a conscience. Mm -hmm. But I have a father who always used to say that you do good for the sake of doing good. Not because you're expecting somebody to say thank you. And that the, the possibility of people not even saying thank you is so great. So when you do good, move on. Continue along your path. If you meet another person who needs you to do good things to them or um, support them in something, if you can do it, do it and move on. Don't look back and think you're going to get any gratitude because there are too many people who have a lot of um, ingratitude in them. Hmm. And if you look at it, the ungratefulness of human beings will not make you do good. When he was in hospital, on his dying bed actually, he, he said to me, I can see you're really into this politics now. Do you know why I didn't go into politics? I said, no. But I said, but you were a political being. And he said, yes. Everybody came to my father's house. Nkrumah, his ministers, Buzia, the, the rest of them, everybody came to my father's house. Except those who came after he had died. Mm -hmm. There I didn't see in his house. A free far, everybody came to my father's house. Ankara, everybody. I don't know what it was with my father. He seemed to know. And everybody who wanted to meet, who this person wants to meet that person, they'll get in touch with Mr. Ajman. And they'll come and meet in the house. So I kind of met all these political people in the house. And he said, yes. I am 
in there to help solve issues. But I don't get into partisan politics. He said, go and read about the history of your grandfather. How they tore him apart in the same way. So you are in politics. You must first learn to fear your own. And I sat back in his bed. I looked at him. My own. He said, I'm being philosophical. One day you sit back and tell me, ah, okay. I didn't understand him. He said, yes. First lesson, learn to fear your own. When you learn to fear your own, then you can overcome them and learn to do the best for yourself and for whatever you want to do. And I said, okay. But dream who? He said, think about it. For me, the first one that he always talked about was do good for the, because it is good so to do. Okay. Not because you're expecting things. Okay. And he says it all the time. So I lived by it. The work that I was doing with the movement, I needed to see that it would change the face of Ghana. It was a conviction. It was a passion. And that passion, I wasn't going to let it go. It didn't matter what people said. I got a lot of flack even from my husband's ministers and all that. But I had an objective and I, I wanted to see that through. And that objective was the belief that if you empower women enough, they will help change the circumstances of any place you are. Whether it's in your household, your village, your town, your, your country. It will change. But if you impoverish women, they will impoverish the society. It doesn't matter what you do. can continue. They will bring you down. Because they are the center. They hold the, the, the family together. They hold the communities together. Everything. So for me, it was a passion that I, I was going to continue. I wasn't going to let go. And um, it, recently, of course, it came into the, the leadership of that passion. Mm -hmm. Leading it into the politics the leadership of politics. But the passion is there. And that is my driving force, actually, more than anything else. I don't know if I've answered your question. You have. <coughs> you have. You have. You have. <laughs> and uh, I, I really share your sentiment that if women are okay, the nation is okay. Yeah. If women are not, we are not. We are not. You know, not because at all. you will never drive by mm -hmm. any pure water seller whose mom is teaching at that time and that child, no matter how poor that teacher is, there's no way that child will be pitched. Anything. Yeah, you know, pitched at the traffic lights yeah. doing pure water. Yeah. So once we educate women, we are we are more than halfway yes. solving our problems. Yeah. If I were to say describe your husband in three words, three. I know there's a lot. Three. Three. Did you say sentences? <laughs> no words. 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 It's impossible. Try. No, it's impossible. I'll not even try. I'll give you three sentences then. Give me ah, give me a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you three it's, sentences. It's, three words is out of the window. So now you're asking for three sentences. Three sentences to try. And multiple decide. sentences or simple sentences? Simple sentences. No, that's simple, difficult. Simple sentences. It has to be a multiple sentence. <laughs> okay, simple. Let's try. Let's try. You know, nobody's asked me to do this before. So it's difficult. But then you know him better than us. Yeah, even he's very forthright. Even though we That's think one. Not, yeah, okay. Okay. He, um, he has passion in, about what he does. Mm -hmm. And when, when, he takes, um, when he takes on a fight, he wants to see it through. So he's a finisher. He's a finisher. But most importantly, this is my third one. Most no, this, is, this is your fourth one, but is I'll it? allow it. Yeah. I thought the well, passion and the fourth, other one go together. Fourth right, passion, finisher, but I'll, I'll, I'll take you. I'll give you that. <laughs> okay. Well, you're former first lady. You, uh, <laughs> I can give I'm you that. I'm cheating on you now. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he, he believes that when you're giving a task to do, you do it with diligence honesty and um, 
with a lot of perception and forthrightness. He does not believe that when something does not belong to you, you should take it at all. And if I'm not careful, I'll go into other areas. But no. let me just add that um, years ago, years ago, one of his disciples, let me put it that mm -hmm. way, who was with him all the time, said to him, you are moving away from our objective um, into the era of the bourgeoisie. And I think that it will not all go well for the revolution. I was cooking in the kitchen. We were sitting at the dining table. And my husband asked him, what is bourgeoisie? If you think I'm going to move 11 million Ghanaians into poverty, then you haven't understood why I'm here. I want to move in, um, uh, 11 million people in Ghana to become millionaires. That is my objective. That's how the guys. Wow. Did you get it? Yeah, yeah I get it. I get it. And I strongly so believe that... I'm not here that to make people purpose. I want to move people into a higher level. Let's have 11 million Ghanaians, not 11 million poor people. For what? Nana, anything you would have done differently? I mean, at the height of your political career, I say, look, I took this decision this day. On the benefit of hindsight, I would have done it differently. Is there any, anything that you would have done that you think, no? Lots. Yeah? Yeah, lots. Um, I used to take my children on my rounds to the regions and all that until they were old enough to stay at home on their own. And um, I was trying to direct my household from afar. If I had the opportunity again, maybe the way I was literally, um, what do they call it? When you manage something, micromanaging, micromanaging <laughs> the movement, I would have done it differently. Mm. I would have done it differently. Maybe I would not have had the same effect. But I, th I think that I would have done it differently. Because I spent all my time doing that. The rest of the time I gave to the children. I gave no time for myself. Well, so at this point, as I see my uh, producer flashing your fingers all over the first place, it's not a break here. But it's Mother's Day. <clears throat> so how can I come and talk to the ultimate mother and not, you know, you can't come empty-handed. Even oh. as a traditionalist, unkwa invira don sapaisa kwa so at this point, I will give a oh, really. Wow. So there's that. I don't, oh. know, I don't know what's in it. The chocolate. <laughs> and then a. Wow! Oh my goodness! And there's. You don't have to bring me this. tears for talking to you. But it's Mother's Day. Oh, yes, that's not, really nice. You know, it's Mother's Day. Wow! At least they should have. Oh, thank you. You get a kiss when we get up. <laughs> I'm touched. <laughs> I'm touched. Uh, well, so it says thank you from Odo Asem. We appreciate oh. you. Oh, so this was from Odo Asem. Mm -hmm. And oh, so I think that's where we got the gifts from. Odo Asem. Odo Asem. That's really nice. Nicely packaged, but I don't know what's in it. Do you want us to open Yes, please. Can um, we? Yes, please. Let's be inquisitive. Am, am I allowed to be inquisitive? Um. <laughs> I'm then supposed to look inside. I don't even know. What if it's lingerie? It's nicely. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It wouldn't be. <laughs> it's nicely oh, this way. Ah, okay. Oh, wow. Mm, it smells nice, whatever it is. Smoky wood. Mm, okay. So let's put this here. It's a lovely Mother's Day. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, yeah. hey. That's why it's really nice. Ah, scented candles. candles. Yes, yeah, really nice. Hmm. <laughs> very, very nice. Thank you. Whoa, aren't oh, you, well, aren't you lucky? Well, yes, come, I am. How come fathers you want me never... to open it again? How come fathers never get well, you things know, and all this fast? Fathers are kind of boring. I want to get children. How come fathers never wow. get all that? 
Oh, this is really ah, nice. Oh, lovely figurine. Oh, this is really nice. I think it will, it will look nice on your, on your, on your. Oh no, no, I'm taking it home. I'm taking it. Home. Mm. <laughs> okay, I'll put it. This for the candles. I think it's a candle. Yes. Yeah, it's a candle holder. Candle holder. Lovely African, really you know, nice. Maasai who will be carrying yeah. your lovely candles. You know, Kimathi is named after. Um, a Maasai. No, after okay. Ekikuyu. Okay. Kimathi. After they done Kimathi. Kimathi. You don't know the history? No. Kimathi was the freedom fighter. Kimathi did more than Kenyatta did. Ah, I see. Kimathi was the, 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 the scenes, you know, man. Uh, what do you call it? Blaze. What do they call Tra it? Trailblazer. Trailblazer. Osa Hine. As you say, Osa Hine. Osa Hine. Osa Hine. The, he's the one who started fighting the British, and the, the Brit he set up the, the Mau Mau, he set up the Mau Mau, okay. and Kenyatta and all were like his small boys in there, and then he, he um, the British timed him very well, caught up with him, and assassinated him, and then when they killed him, to stop others from, you know, working with the freedom fighters, they cut up his body into little, little, little pieces and started dropping it in the various villages that if you do what Dedan Kimathi has done, this is what we'll do to you. So nobody saw the body of Dedan Kimathi again. They killed him. Wow. And the British can tell us what we should do now. They've done worse things. Isn't that? that now, is what I you, yes, I think so. Because I, I think I'm more inquisitive than you are. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Oh, Rafflers. Mm -hmm. oh, this is very nice. What is this? It's for this. Yeah. Like so. Ah, it comes with a jacket. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. That's beautiful. It is. That's good, my guest room. Edwin and Aswell. And a beautiful scarf. You want to talk? I want to see. No. <laughs> <Just talk. laughs> okay, you talk. <coughs> I just want this to find really out. really nice. Very, very nice. Life Thank in you. retirement. Is it, is it busier now? Uh, or is it more relaxing now? Hmm. I think my state of mind is relaxed. Mm -hmm. But I'm still very busy. Because I'm, I'm trying to help build a party you see. Mm -hmm. so we're busy trying to build the NDP into a formidable party okay. we need to have a party that has conviction and passion about this country and how to get this country to be to stop crawling and stop behaving like we are we don't have uh, a jankama mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, mu we must have uh, strength in parenting parentage that we should have a mother who will push the country up now I wasn't. I won't. I won't don't do. I don't, no, I don't want to do <laughs> politics. I don't want to do politics. But just, just briefly, and then summarize the answer for me, and then we we'll move away from politics. Is uh, aren't we too too party state drunk to accept, you know, another movement? I mean, the culture that we've created as a nation through no fault of nobody, but you know, one yeah. from your husband, the other from the other side, and they are very entrenched in, you know, their positions. If that were so true. I don't think that the social, the Lib Dem people would be where they are today. End of story. All good things come to an end. And I could sit here for another six hours and listen to this wonderful woman, you know, uh, talk in depth. Not even Mother's Day talk, you know, really in depth. But today we'll keep it on a Mother's Day level. But we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Pleasure. And, and I also want to say thank you to Odasem. Odasem is a gift shop. And obviously you can tell Beautiful. they are very exquisite. Oh, yeah. Indeed, they've given things which... First ladies, I appreciate so very much. You know, so you know, if you are thinking of giving your mother anything today, find or do ask them, or you can give them a call zero five four one double five four triple one. Just as we've given our mom a treat here, nice treat. But uh, very nice. I hope you invite me again. So I we will. Talk, so we talk politics, not Mother's Day. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, until I come to you. Uh, Next Friday with a different personality, have a beautiful week.